Welcome back. Let's talk about Android security. Android is by default an open operating system. It's open source compared, of course, to uh, iOS, which is closed source. But there are a lot of different security measures within Android. And we will cover the following topics shortly. System security, network security, software isolation, and anti-exploitation. So let's start with system security. System security exists of device encryption is one of the topics. Android has different types of encryption or supports different type of encryption. File-based encryption for Android 7 or later. And full disk encryption for Android 5 until 9. So again, we can this look, up, look this up in the official documentation. So it mentions basically that file-based encryption is the way to go. And also Android 9 is supporting metadata encryption, which is a different type of encryption, but let's keep it to the difference between file-based encryption and full disk encryption. So file-based encryption allows different files to be encrypted with different keys that can be unlocked independently. So with file-based encryption, so for every file you want to encrypt, you can configure this. So it's quite flexible and full disk encryption. Already the documentation says full disk encryption is not allowed on new devices running Android 10 and higher. And yeah, what this page says that full disk encryption uses a single key protected with the user device password to protect the whole device user data partition. Upon boot, the user must provide credentials. And the disadvantage of this is that it encrypts everything. So on reboot, also some of the main native applications like your phone uh, yeah, are not working unless you uh, enter the decryption key, basically. And yeah, because of this, uh, yeah, Android wants to stop with this type of encryption. So in the labs, we will mainly cover the file-based encryption. And another part of the system security is the trusted execution environment. A trusted execution environment is a secure area within a device main processor that is designed to provide and protect the execution environment from sensitive code and data. So in this picture you see there is a rich execution environment, which is basically a non-trusted execution environment and a trusted execution environment. A trusted execution environment, yeah, basically gives more uh, protection. Within Android, it takes care of isolation based on the operating system. It protects sensitive data against potential vulnerabilities. So that's next to encryption another measure and it provides secure boot and for the communication it also protects against uh, interception of the network traffic if the apps are running within the trusted execution environment so secure storage of cryptographic keys is one of the things performing secure boot protecting biometric data so that's also a type of sensitive data so your fingerprints for example and also for those banking apps for example if they run into the trusted execution environment there is some additional security let's ensure the trusted execution environment and also verified boot strives to ensure all executed code come from a trusted source so if you jailbreak a device for example you have to disable verified boot so this is something you can enable and disable but if your device is not jailbroken and you run an official android version then the verified boot will verify that yeah that the source code is uh, coming from a trusted source and that you're not running some uh, different uh, malicious software, for example. The next topic of Android security is the network security. Yeah, by default, Android uses TLS and DNS since Android 9. And you can have a separate network security configuration per app. Another measure is certificate pinning. This takes care of, for example, that your uh, banking app or uh, app which handles sensitive data only trusts communication so apis in the background for example which are using a trusted certificate which is installed on the device and we will have some examples in the lab because it's called certificate pinning so it also yeah, handles that you cannot decrypt the traffic the network traffic but yeah there are some uh, tricks to uh, to bypass this the next topic is software isolation which is part of android security android uses the linux kernel as we explained earlier or linux with a specific kernel version and also android uses a specific security enhanced linux which enforces mandatory access control and isolate apps in sandboxes so this is one of the most important security measures for the running apps that they cannot leak data outside their sandbox and also we will cover this topic later permissions are declared per app 
in the manifest file. That's a very important configuration file, which every app needs to have. And yeah, it declares permissions, but also, for example, the permissions for the user the app needs. So you need to deny or allow specific permissions as a user when you're using the app. But let's dive a little bit more into the security enhanced Linux. So again, the Android documentation uh, yeah, gives you some explanation, but it's short for security enhanced Linux. There are two modes which it can run. Permissive modes in which permission denials are locked but not enforced and enforcing modes in which permissions denials are both locked and enforced. And Android uses the enforcing mode, so it will disallow you to access data, for example, outside the sandbox. That's an important thing to know about the security enhanced Linux. So yeah, if you're interested in this topic, you can uh, look up the documentation, but in short, it takes care of the sandboxes and it's running in permissive mode. So it will disallow you, for example, to access data outside the sandbox if this is not configured. Uh, last part of the Android security is the anti-exploitation part. So even if you're able to exploit a uh, vulnerable app, for example, there are still some protections similar to other uh, Linux-based uh, applications. Even, for example, if it's running uh, using Java within the virtual machine, if you have a vulnerability on operating system level, then you might still be able to exploit it. But there are some security measures like ASLR, which is address space layout randomization, since Android 4, so it's already there for a long time. Kernel address space layout randomization since Android 8. Data execution prevention. So if you run malicious software, it will also block you to, uh, to run it. And also some measures to secure syscalls. But those topics are a little bit advanced for the basics. So we will cover this in the uh, more advanced training. So for now, let's... Uh, <coughs> So for now, this is all you need to know for the Android basics about security. 